Well, hey everybody, welcome back to the garage. I'm trying out a new camera today, so the sound's gonna be funky. I know the sound of the last video was a little funky too, because that was an even different camera mixed in with my normal camera. But I'm just trying to improve things, and I needed something more like a GoPro because the areas that I'm working in tend to be very tight. And the normal camera that I use, I can actually show it to you guys here. It's this Panasonic Lumix G7. It's actually a really great camera for filming, but it has a very long lens, and so it's hard to get really tight into areas. Um, but not so much with this camera. Uh, this camera is a regular GoPro, so it ought to do pretty good. So enough about cameras. We're not talking about cameras. We're talking about a VW Beetle that I was able to uh, split, and it was very difficult and uh, I'll tell you about it right now. Okay, in order to get the top and the bottom split, first I disconnected basically all the wires that are attached to this wiring harness that comes through the firewall there. So that includes wires that are attached to the generator. Um, there was a wire attached to the carburetor, like the fuel shutoff switch and I'm sure I'm forgetting something. I think uh, the condenser had one on it. Um, so basically what I did is I just traced this wire loom down and disconnected everything that came from that wire loom. Down there is the master cylinder and there's four wires that go into the master cylinder and so I had to pull those. There are two fluid lines that have to be pulled out also because they are attached to this this brake fluid reservoir here. And last I had to take apart this linkage between the steering column and the steering rack. So we have we have four bolts in the un, under the back seat. They're along this beam here. One, two, three, four. In the front, underneath the gas tank, you've got one, two bolts. Behind the back fenders, you have, on each side, you have a body mount right there. And then I'm not going to be able to show you this with the current camera setup, but along the edge, on the underside of each side, there's going to be nine bolts that you have to unbolt. So there's some type of a torsion spring. That's what this guy is here. And I went ahead and just unscrewed there's a nut on the underside of it so it'll come free from the rest of the car when I lift it up I don't I didn't really do any research on how it's actually supposed to come apart but I figured that's just as good as a way to do it as any and then inside here I disconnected there's a battery cable connection here there's another harness connection over here um, so I made sure to separate those and all I have left is I've got the, um, I don't know if you can see them, right there there's these these little cables that control the flaps on the heater, uh, the heater controls. I've got to disconnect those. That's everything that I've figured out so far. Um, oh, I think I mentioned the speedometer cable. i got to get the speedometer cable out of there. I'm pretty sure that uh, that's everything. I will certainly find out as soon as I start to lift this. And I'm going to carefully lift this guy, but as you can see already I can just grab it in the whole front end. Oops, I'm bumping my camera, but the whole front end already moves. So it's pretty loose. I did the same test on the back. The back's a little heavier than the front, so. So I just, I gotta go out and buy some wood and um, rig up a system that'll help me lift up the whole body and then put it up on stands so I can slide out, just roll out the, the, uh, the pan. Um, I really only need to, I don't really need to clear anything. I don't have a rear apron and that's really the only thing that had would have to clear the engine. So technically, I'd only have to lift it up maybe about six inches to a foot. 
but I'm still going to probably get it up a little higher than that so it'll be comfortable to stand inside it and work on the inside. So here's my question for the day. Do you see this bracket right here on the emergency brake? Is that how that bracket is supposed to work? I, I have, I guess these, there's two cables on either side and I, I'm assuming both cables are for the emergency brake. I didn't even check to see if there was emergency brake cables. I guess both rear wheels have emergency brake. So is that how that bracket is supposed to be? It just seems a little inelegant, I guess. I've been pretty impressed with the rest of the engineering on this. And uh, so if you guys have any idea, let me know. I surely would appreciate it. So I ended up not filming for a couple of reasons. Um, first of all, I had guests or people come and help me and, and uh, you know, I kind of just do this on my own. I may be a little uncomfortable trying to film in front of other people, um, but they may not be comfortable with me filming as well, but I never asked them, so I don't know. Um, and second of all, the nature of doing this type of an operation is dangerous enough uh, without tr being distracted with uh, cameras and filming equipment and things like that. And so I just decided to go ahead and do the work and then I would talk about it later. So uh, without further ado, here, you can have a look here. And there it is up on its uh, saw horses, bug horses, so whatever you want to call them. And uh, so. Originally, the goal was just to get it high enough for the bottom edge of the bug to clear the top edge of the shock towers, but I didn't do any measurements or anything. I just kind of had the wood pre-cut and I put it, slapped it all together, and this is how high it ended up being. And this will end up working out well for me anyway because a lot of the work I have to do is right here on these heater channels, which is right at about waist height, which would be perfect for welding. And then a lot of the body work I have to do is gonna be on these corners, which is right at, you know, chest height or waist height. So again, these uh, all four corners are pretty much at the perfect height for me to work on them. I do have to do some additional bracing on the saw horses. I gotta put in uh, cross braces here on either, on, you know, both sides just to uh, minimize the the side to side movement, but it, it is pretty solid right now as we speak. I didn't do anything too fancy. Um, basically what I had done was I had jacked up the front end um, really high, as high as I could with this jack. Then I lifted the front, the, the nose of the bug by myself and my, my dad actually slid in this beam and then we built this sawhorse in place and lifted it up into place because the front end's really light. And then, so then you'll see that in the thumbnail, the video is actually what it looks like where the front end was up high and then it, and it swoops down and it was still attached, or not attached, but it was still resting on the body mounts in the back. So then I had my brother-in-law come over and I pre-built this horse and then my brother-in-law lifted on both of these corners and my dad slipped the sawhorse in place in the back and Everything turned out really well. Um, no real damage. Uh, the tarboard got a little scratch on it, and maybe the uh, the oil cooler housing something happened to it. Maybe, but besides that, everything else is pretty good. No real new discoveries as of right now. The only thing that's got me slightly perplexed is this electrical connection right here. Um, nothing was attached to it. If I had to guess, I haven't looked it up yet, but if I had to guess, I'm, uh, I'm thinking it's probably the license plate light because the, uh, the old deck lid, if you remember, it had had a fire and uh, there was the, the wiring to the license plate light was all burnt up and gone, so I I'm guessing that's what it is. You guys can let me know if I'm wrong. Um, so here it is in all of its glory, ready to be rolled out and moved over to the next stall in my garage. It's gonna have to wait though. I have some work that needs to be done on my daughter's Ford Ranger. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna film that or not, um, cause it just needs to get done. 
it needs a new exhaust and it needs a new rear window because I accidentally threw a piece of firewood through the back window and uh, so now it's just got a bunch of duct tape all over it so that's about it um, hopefully I gave you guys a really good view of everything uh, that's going on here uh, look at those boots those boots are in great condition they might have been replaced recently I know that some stuff has been replaced recently those boots look fairly new what do you think so I don't know if I will be able to save those or not but if I if they are worth saving that's what I'll do so anyway if you guys see anything holler at me got any more advice I will gladly take it Thanks everybody for watching. I know this was a short one and hopefully I'll get right back to this beetle as soon as I can. But uh, stay subscribed and uh, you'll get notified whenever something new comes out. And until then, I will see you guys later. So if I come across any other things that I missed, I'll be sure to add them.